Not going to lie to you. The TLC match between Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns should have definitely ended the show. I'm just being 100. Good job, it's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So I just finished watching TLC, man, and I'm not gonna lie to you. I was enjoying it until the ending of the last match. Um, not it, it I that the ending of that inferno match, which I didn't even know was taking place because I hadn't really been watching Raw and keeping up with things. I, I was just mainly confused and disappointed because wwe decided to go the route of cringe uh, we've seen it before earlier this year with the eye for eye match and how hokey that was how it doesn't make sense for two competitors to be trying to gouge out their eyes in order for the for the person to win the match and potentially win the feud um, I want to start with this match because this was obviously the match that kind of just ruined the ending of the pay-per-view for me and I'm stick by my statements I do feel like the TLC match between Roman and Kevin Owens should have ended the show it was the best match of the night for me personally so I want to save that for the end of my thoughts and opinions uh, took some notes because I had to take some notes on this one uh, on this pay-per-view so I can kind of remember certain things but let's get into the Inferno match man um First and foremost, like I said, I didn't think this match was taking place. I haven't seen an Inferno match in a very long time. It's only been a hand few that have ever been done in WWE. And, of course, it works more back in the day than it does now. Um, usually, with the Inferno matches, they would have the, the fire set up around the actual ring itself. But I did like the creative aspect since there isn't a crowd. They had, like, these little... These little towers that had the fire going up the towers that had the fire all around the ring, actual like the ring area behind the barricades. Like there was fire pretty much everywhere. So I, I thought that was kind of creative how they use Bray Wyatt as raising up the fire. I thought that was a cool visual. Um, the Fiend set the leather strap, like one of the leather straps he found on fire. I thought we was going to get something with that. Um, nothing really happened. I, they, they really teased a lot of using the fire, which you expect in this type of match. Once again, I still didn't understand why this was happening. I mean, I get the, the ongoing feud from in the past when Bray was part of the Wyatt family and Randy Orton pretty much burnt down the, the Wyatt family compound. So I get the, the semblance there. And, uh, they showed in the promo package, Randy Orton tried to set, uh, Bray on fire in this little, this little, I want to say it's like a, it's like a, uh, an equipment cart, but it's like wooden. He tried to set it on fire and the fiend pops out and attacks him. So I get it. But once again, I don't think those type of matches will work nowadays. It's just in a believable standpoint for me personally. Um, this is when the match really started getting kind of hokey for me. My man's the fiend decided to pick up a pickaxe. From under the ring. I don't know why there's a random pickaxe under the ring. They have everything under the ring. He picked up a random pickaxe from under the ring and tried to literally kill Randy Orton with it. This is why I said these type of matches don't really work. Eye for an eye match. If you take out somebody's eye, bro, you may not kill them, but it's still like, yo, that's they're done for the rest of their life. They're permanently damaged. So you picking up a pickaxe, you may not kill them, but there's a good chance you may. <laughs> like, I, I I guess, I don't, I didn't, that, I don't know what to say. It's like, yo, bro, it's it's already an Inferno match. Now you're picking up random pickaxes. So he, he picked up the pickaxe. He went to go swing at Randy. Of course, he missed. Um... Then the fiend decides to get out the uh, the chair, the Bray Wyatt rocking chair. He gets it out. He was able to, uh, you know, incapacitate Randy Orton for a little bit. And uh, before he did that, he set the chair on fire, and then he set this trail of gasoline, you know, by the ringside area where the announcers would be at. So he was able to get Randy Orton to sit on the chair that's doused in gasoline, picks up a lighter, light it up, and of course Randy is 
magically knocked out until the fire travels towards him and he's able to get up get up at the last minute and i'm like at this point it was getting so like cringe for me the only reason why i even watched this match and i'm being honest because i didn't know it was actually an inferno match so i wanted to see how they were going to do it and i regret watching this i'm being honest i should have turned it off as soon as the tlc match ended between roman and kevin because this was no this was not it for me so at that point um i want to say i do like the fact that of course Orton was able to find his own weapons of mass destruction. So he pulled out a chain, which I can believe a chain would be under the ring. He pulls out a chain. He started getting some offense in. He was using a chain around his fist as, fist as a weapon. So I was liking the fact that Randy at some point was getting some type of offense in. Because for the most part, it was really the Fiend beginning of this match. And I was like, I don't know if they're going to go this route of making the Fiend once again like this unstoppable force. So I do like the fact that he was getting in some offense, some major offense. A couple times he was close to putting uh, uh, the Fiend on fire, setting him on fire. Then they got back into the ring. And I do, he's probably the only person I've really seen like sell this move correctly, in my opinion. We all know the... Uh, when Bray gets to his opponents and it looks like he's about to break his neck, he's really not breaking his neck. But I like the way that Randy sells it like his neck's in pain because I would think if someone really just does that with some force, that would probably hurt your neck. So him selling it as not as if, oh, the dude, you know, is, you know, damn near kills me. You know what I'm saying? Like he's selling it as in like he's put a lot of torque on his neck it's still kind of an impractical move but i like the way that randy sold that move so that was that was another at least some type of positive for me um the um what's the next part the fiend was on fire okay so all right let me let me let me uh let me set this up like i said this i i was literally just typing down some notes still kind of confused what was going on here so they get back to the outside of the ring, and uh, he applies, uh, the Fiend applies the Mandible Claw to, to Randy Orton, and Randy Orton has his back against the, the flames. But then Randy Orton was able to turn it, and I will give all type of respect to Bray Wyatt. Uh, I'm sure he had on like this flame-resistant type uh, material on his uh, leather jacket, but... He ends up catching on fire. And then like a decent, like his whole torso is on fire. Randy Orton backs up, gets into the ring. And what was crazy to me is the Fiend was, ran into the ring. Like he walked, then he ran into the ring like he was okay. And he's on fire. Like his torso is visibly on fire. I thought that was a cool image. You know, once again, this, this crazy match to be having in 2020. But I thought that was a cool image visually. And just to, I gotta give, I will give mad respect to Bray for being willing to put himself on fire. Like, that was pretty, that's badass, bro. He deserved his paycheck tonight for sure. So he runs into the ring, he's on fire. He get hit with an RKO while he's on fire. I'm like, all right, cool. So at this point, the match is pretty much over. I'm expecting the heel to hear the bell ring. The bell doesn't ring. The rules of the matches, when your opponent get any part of his body gets set on fire, the match is over, the bell should ring. Somebody should come out there with, uh, you know, fire extinguishers, set, you know, douse him out, make sure he's good, and, and try to treat his wound. Something. Nothing happened. Match kept going on, apparently. The bell did not ring. So, at this point, I'm just sitting there like, what's going on? Randy gets out of the ring. The Fiend is still laying in the ring. Gets out of the ring, gets up a, a gasoline canister, starts dowsing down Bray in gasoline. He's not moving. He's just laying faced up. And in my mind, I wrote this down. Why is no ref stopping the goddamn match? Where's the ref out? So, what? Hey, ref, there's about to be a potential murder. Hey, Vince, somebody in the back, stop this. No one's stopping the damn match. No one's like coming out there to stop it. The announcer was like, yo, stop it, Randy. But it's like, bro, where are the officials? So at this point, I'm like, yo, this is about to be some mega hokey, sh like mega hokey cringe trash is about to happen. Like Rey Mysterio losing his eye type cringe. I'm like, oh, bro, here we go. 
Here we go. So, at this point, Randy gets a match. He lights it. The announcers are begging, no, don't do it. Don't do it. I, I wish JR was on commentary. It probably would have been 10 times better. Good God, don't do it, man. Don't do it, Randy. You sick son of a bitch. He has a family. Something like that. My man Randy waits for a little while before that match burns out. Then he throws it on Bray. And when I say Bray, it's not really Bray. You can clearly see it's a goddamn dummy when they cut back to the body being set on flame, set of blaze. When I say I, I rewind it because I had to make sure because I'm like, there's no way that's Bray. Because even with like stunt doubles in movies, they only have them on fire for a couple seconds at a time, even with the flame gel that they have on. And then they set them, you know, they they extinguish them quick because it can get really hot. There ain't no way, no matter what type of gel, flame gel he has on him, there's no way he's just slain there without even moving while he's on fire. And then I look again, and you can clearly see it's a dummy. I'm like, oh, that was cringe, bro. That ruined the 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 end of the pay per view for me. And then Randy Orton is just he hits his infamous pose as he murders somebody on television. So yeah, TLC ended with a murder. Now, of course, obviously this feud's gonna continue and the fiend is gonna come back. He's gonna be resurrected from the ashes, and there's gonna be a rematch. Do I care for a rematch? No, I don't. I don't even care, bro. I don't. So let me know if you guys are looking forward to them next match because I'm sure there's going to be another match. Like, The Fiend is not dead, guys. Uh, that was cringe. That kind of ruined my experience towards the end of TLC. I'm not going to lie to you. So had to get that match out the way because I, I really didn't want to talk about that. Now, let's get into uh, another match that um, I wasn't really interested in. I was kind of skimming through, and that's the uh, women's uh, tag team uh, match that they had. And uh, it was basically Nia Jax and um, what's her name? They buried her so much in my eyes, I damn near forgot. <laughs> Shayna Baszler, bro. She, remember when Shayna Baszler was a, such a badass before she came to the main roster? You remember that? Me too. Me too. So... It was, you know, they're they're having their tag team match, and Asuka doesn't have a partner. So she was trying to find a partner, and guess who returns? Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair comes back, surprise return. I thought it was very interesting because, if you guys remember, Asuka was undefeated. She had never lost a match when she came to the main roster. And, of course, she ends up losing to Charlotte at WrestleMania, which I think was the dumbest thing I, I don't think she should have lost, bro. She could have she should have kept her undefeated streak for a minute, bro. I, I no, bro. But that's neither here nor there. But I do like to have have history. So I'm thinking, well, if Charlotte's teaming up with her and Oscar's the women's uh champion, hey man, I can see you know Charlotte turning on her mid match because she wants to take the title. She wants to regain the title. So. Oh, I'm thinking that was going to happen, but no, I kind of fast forward the, through the match. And as soon as I fast forward through the match, the match was over. Uh, Charlotte ends up pinning Shayna Baszler. That's why I say Shayna, she's not the imposing threat that she should be. I'm just be honest with you. She's not. She hasn't been imposing since NXT. So, yeah. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, they lose the, the Women's Tag Team Championship. So, obviously, they're planting seeds. I don't think there's anyone else that could possibly take Oscar's title except Charlotte. So it'll be interesting to see how their dissension. And it's always with the tag team championships. Have you guys noticed that? Have you guys noticed with the women's tag team championships, there's always some dissension. There's either one person is the champ and someone else has the title and they win the titles together. Like, of course, uh, Bailey and Sasha, they were both women's tag team champs but then also bailey was the women's smackdown uh champion and then they ended up feuding and this is probably going to happen the same way they're gonna you know win a couple matches or whatever and then charlotte's gonna want that title for herself and then they're gonna end up losing the titles to somebody uh the tag titles and then charlotte's gonna go after the uh raw women's championship so 
I think that's what's going to happen. But I will. I am saying, I will say this. I am looking forward. I can't even speak. I am looking forward to their match. I think their, their match, Oscar versus Charlotte, should be very good. Nice little rematch. I am looking forward to that. Um, the only problem is I think Oscar will probably lose because they love them some Charlotte. So, you know, I, I think that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, the other women's match between uh, Sasha and Carmella, did I watch? No. I skipped to the end. That was it. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Not really. Didn't care. Didn't even give a damn. Um, I believe there. I believe there was another match on there. Not even sure. Uh, with the new day, maybe. Uh, I want to say, but I didn't watch that match. I didn't really too much care because you know, hey man, I'm only watching stuff that I want to watch. So, uh, then of course let's get into the first TLC match that started off the show. Uh, Drew versus AJ Styles decent match it was a decent tlc match i like the storytelling in this match uh aj using the chair on drew mcintyre's leg um that was pretty brutal it was a pretty brutal image of course they're selling that his you know his leg was attacked um in the promo package you see that you know aj had went for his legs um on on whatever episode of monday night raw because i don't watch monday night raw but that was kind of the story here basically going for uh, Drew McIntyre's leg and kind of, you know, pretty much making it hard for him to even climb a ladder, let alone compete. And that he had that chair on, wrapped around Drew's leg for a minute. Pretty brutal stuff. So I like the storytelling there. Drew suplexing Styles on the ladder. Oh, man, that was that was a nice visual. Anytime somebody gets suplex dropped, on any type of ladder, man, it, it just it's it's just a brutal image. Anytime I see it, okay. And look, I know you guys are probably wondering once once again why I'm looking at my phone. Got notes in here, man. I had to keep notes. I want to keep notes so I can keep track of mentally what happens in the pay per view. So this is probably what I'll be doing for all my future thoughts and opinion videos. So I hope you guys understand that. Just got to keep my notes, man. Got to keep it together. All right. So Drew launched AJ over the top rope. Down to the table down below. At this point, Drew's leg has really been giving him the problem throughout the match. Drew launches AJ over the top rope, falls straight to the table. And at this point, it's looking like Drew is going to potentially win the match because AJ is out there on the floor in a heap and he's the only one in the ring. And then, of course, the Miz comes through. And puts Drew through a table and cashes in his money in the bank with John Morrison. And I'm like, all right. In my head, I don't think Miz is going to win this. I don't. They have ruined money in the bank. They ruined it. This For 2020, money in the bank shouldn't have even existed. They gave it to um, Tucker, which I was surprised at that him winning it. Then he ends up losing it. Then he ends up getting sent back to developmental. So it didn't really matter. I don't know why you put the, the money in the bank briefcase on him. You put it on somebody that you're trying to get the title on. And ultimately, the Miz winning it, was that was pretty left field anyway. So he cashes in. I'm not thinking he's going to win, but I'm interested to see his dynamic within the match. Um, so at this point... Um, I want to say AJ Styles Enforcer. Dude is tall. He's like 7'3". Ridiculous. Like, yo, what the hell? Dude is really tall. His Enforcer gets involved. Pretty much put Miz through a table. And then John Morrison comes out of nowhere with a chair. And hits his Enforcer in the back. The chair implodes. You can tell it's a fake chair. I'm like, bro, he didn't really put that much force on it. That was definitely not a real chair. Because I've seen people put force force behind their chair shots back in the day and they didn't just implode they just dented up so i get it they're trying to make enforcers look very imposing so at that point his enforcer goes after john morrison and uh i want to say at some point I'm not sure how i'm not sure at what part but AJ ends up getting busted open like you can see a little bit of it but the camera they cut away to it because they don't want to show too much blood, but like it's like the side of his head. He ends up getting busted open a little bit. So I was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? This is a brutal match. TLC matches, they can't be brutal. People do get hurt. So at this point, I think it's it really starts to get more enjoyable for me when they're actually all fighting on the 
in the ring, they have two ladders set up, and they're fighting basically to, you know, reach the title at the top. And Drew is fighting off both The Miz and AJ Styles, bro, on one leg. I thought that was a beautiful image. Like, um, they have made Drew look so strong, bro. This is, I'm so happy for Drew, bro. He deserves it. And ultimately, he ends up winning the match. But that final sequence when they're all fighting at the top of the ladder, it was actually pretty intense. I like that. That was probably the best sequence for me personally in the match. And ultimately, Drew wins it, and he deserves to win it. He needs to hold on to the championship, bro. He's one of the best things on Raw, if not the best thing on Raw. And they have made him look strong. That is why... Drew is, uh, I, I'm I'm so glad, and I can't wait for them to have more crowds in the, like, actual people in the audience, because he deserves to get cheered, because the dude is amazing at what he does in the ring, bro, he's believable, I believe him as the WWE champion, and they have made him look very, very strong, so, glad that Drew won, we will see who he feuds with next, I don't think he should feud with AJ Styles next, uh, well, not again, but we will see, and The Miz, Go do something else, bro. <laughs> you lost the briefcase. Whatever. All right, cool. Doesn't matter. Now, the best match of the night. The match you guys, I know, want to, want, to, want me to talk about. This match was fantastic. And I am so proud to be able to say for the past few months, the past few months, the best matches have involved Roman Reigns. And you want to know why? Because he's the tribal chief, he's gone rogue, and he is the best heel in the company, damn near in wrestling. So good. So goddamn good. This match was great. I enjoyed it. This was the match of the night for me. This was the match I wanted to see. This was the match that should have ended off the show. I got plenty of notes. I got to scroll for this one. I got plenty of notes for this one, man. So I already thought something was off because usually the challenger, I want to say, the, cha the yeah, the challenger always usually supposed to come out first and then the champion comes out. But Roman had came out first. So I knew something wasn't right. And as soon as I said that, Kevin Owens attacked Roman and it was great. It was so good because this was the first time I'm cheering to get to see Roman get his ass beat, not because I hate that he's getting shoved down our throat in the past from his character and Vince forcing him upon us. I'm I'm cheering that he's getting his ass whooped because I just want to see Kevin Owens get some type of revenge on him because he's been getting destroyed for weeks. So this was so satisfying to see, bro. Kevin Owens was not playing no game. And then, of course, Jay comes out there at the beginning of the match to help out his uh his cousin and Kevin Owens beats the living crap out of him. He hits his uh his foot and starts destroying his ankle. If I'm Kevin, I would have did some more damage. I would have been out there trying to make sure Jay could never walk again. That that would have been my mission, man. It it was such it was felt so good. Every chair shot, every swing from Kevin, you just like, yes, this is what I like to see. So at this point, Roman starts to get the upper hand, and Roman's bro, this is so good. My camera died, so I'm back at it again. So let's continue this. So. Roman gets brutal with the chair, like the, the steel steps. He gets the upper hand on Kevin Owens. I'm, when I say brutal, he's repeatedly just smashing him over the chest with the stairs. He's It's like he's not even the same Roman we've known in the past. Just just rage, just hatred. I, I love it, bro. So good. So goddamn good, bro. Then he starts destroying Kevin Owens with a steel chair. He's beating him over it, slash smashing him in like in the chest area with it. Like he, he's getting down and dirty. He's coming, he's going rogue, as the as Dub says, man. So at that point, uh this was nice. This this ah uh, this was nice. The back body drop to Kevin onto the two chairs. There was two chairs placed like in the middle of the ring, you know, facing each other. And Roman delivers a back body drop. Oh, Kevin, your spine. I feel for your spine. R.I.P. to Kevin's spine. 
brutal, brutal spot. Roman is just enjoying it too. He just he just wants to hurt Kevin, bro, to prove a point, talking trash. Oh, this is the heel that we've all deserved, man. The fisherman suplex to Roman through the chair. Nice. This is when uh, Kevin Owens start to gain some offense back. And I like the story they were telling. Kevin Owens was not going to go out without a fight. Everything that Roman was doing, Kevin kept getting back up and finding a, some way to get some offense in. That back, that fisherman suplex, oh my God. Roman was in legit pain. That wasn't no selling, bro. I think the corner of his head hit like the edge of the chair, bro. Brutal spot. Brutal, brutal, brutal spot. Um, of course, Jay gets involved again. And like I said, Kevin Owens is fighting off two people. He's doing all he can. He He's making it somewhat believable. Like maybe Kevin can pull it off. Pop a power bomb to Jay. On the outside, get the hell up out of here, bro. How many times I got to make sure you you leave this match, man? You shouldn't be here. Roman power bombs. Oh, this this is this spot right here. Roman power bombs Kevin Owens. After he power bombed his cousin, he power bombs Kevin Owens in the ring to like a ladder that's leaning up against a rope, right? They're showing the instant replay of it. It's already brutal. What when they're showing the picture in picture? I wish they would have waited. Roman sets the ladder up that he just powerbombed Kevin on on its side on the edges and just slams him on it, bro. They had to show a replay of that. I saw it on the picture in picture. And I was like, oh my god, he is trying to kill this man. Oh my god, such a brutal spot, bro. Once again, it's selling this story like. Kevin will not stay down. How is he getting back up? I love this. This is how you create the ultimate baby face when you have a piece of shit heel. Um, at this point, I want to say Roman is talking trash. He's he's talking major trash, bro. Like, yo, you're, you're a disgrace to your family. Just stay down. You're embarrassing your family. All this other stuff. Kevin Owens like, hey, you could suck it, Roman. Slaps him in the face, and bro, he hits him with the meanest spear. Woo! Right through a table. Kevin Owens is slumped in the rubble. Beautiful, beautiful sequence there. Showing that Kevin Owens, he, he has a lot of heart, but Roman Reigns doesn't give a damn about his heart or Kevin's family. All he cares about is the WWE Universal Championship. Um, Now, here is where things get interesting Kevin doesn't want to stay down like I said they're building up this ultimate baby face Kevin baits Roman into spearing him through the barricade and of course Kevin moves out the way Roman ends up hitting the barricade gets he destroys himself now they're setting it up like Kevin could possibly win this now at this point, I'm excited. I start believing, are they really going to do this? He could possibly do this. Even though in the back of my mind, I know it's not going to happen. But it's just the thought of it. It's, you know, it's, it's enticing. The thought of it is very enticing. So, at this point, um, I want to say, where are we at in the match? Okay. So, Kevin goes, uh, baits Roman into the barricade. The pop-up power bomb in the ring was nice to uh roman roman gets back in the ring from the rubble hits uh kevin owens hits him with a pop-up power bomb through there's another table in the ring through the table bro at this point i'm just enjoying this kevin is showing so much fight fight owen fight roman sells being destroyed through that table after he just destroyed himself through the barricade and then this is when uh he's still fighting off Jay Uso as well. He's Jay keeps getting involved in the match. Kevin is climbing to the top of the ladder. And then of course Roman comes out of nowhere. He gets involved. They're trying to, you know, fight at the top of the ladder. And as Roman is, I guess, getting up there. Not actually Dan, they're not even fighting yet. But as Roman is getting up there. Roman hits him with a low blow. Then he applies the guillotine at the top of the ladder. And once he applied the guillotine, I knew it was over, bro. I knew it was done. He applied it at the top of the ladder. And Kevin Owen falls. And Roman Reigns retrieves the Universal Championship. And once again, 
fantastic match, bro. Fantastic match, bro. This I knew this match was going to be good, and it was great. Kevin Owens looks good in defeat. He does not look, he didn't get buried. He looks great in defeat because he kept fighting. Roman had to, basically, even though it's fair game in this type of match, but, you know, he hit him with a low blow in order to gain the advantage to reach reach the title. And I like that. I like Roman had to use uh, a heel tactic to overcome the odds, man, because he couldn't put him away and he almost lost it. So this match was great. This is great. This was great. Roman's great. I love this. I don't know who he feuds with next. Comment down below. Let me know who do you guys think he will feud with next, man. But I, I'm, I'm very interested. Of course, there's talks of Goldberg for potentially the Royal Rumble, which I'm okay with as long as he destroys Goldberg. But I, I want to see who he's going to fight with. Potentially a baby face on the main roster that's a full-time wrestler. So... I enjoyed this match. This match alone saved the pay-per-view for me. I just wish the ordering of the matches were better. So, in my opinion, I enjoyed the pay-per-view overall. It it was it had some slow points and the ending kind of, you know, soured my taste on this whole on the whole TLC as a, as TLC as a whole. I can't even talk, bro. I I, I can't cuz the cringe, the cringe is messing up my mind. But I want to get your guys' opinion. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy TLC? Did you guys enjoy um, uh, the, the TLC matches? Which TLC match did you guys enjoy more? And what was your favorite match of the night? I want to know all these things down below in the comment section, man. I appreciate all the love and support. This video is kind of all over the place. It's much longer than usual because I took a lot of notes because I was watching more of the matches this time. So, hope you guys enjoyed the long format, man. And I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 40K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.